Good day, class. It's me, Sir Nand, again, your software engineering course instructor. In continuation with our previous topic, I will be discussing about the types of software. So let's start. I would like to present to you the different types of software. In this course, let us use the classification given by Prisman. So if we will check on the slides, we have system software is one of the types of software. We also have application software, engineering software or scientific type of software. We also have embedded software, product line, web or mobile software, and artificial intelligence. So let me explain to you briefly each type. First, system software. It is a collection of programs written to service other programs. A good example of a system software are, we have compilers like Java, Python, and C++. We also have editors and file management utilities. These system software processes complex but fixed information structures. We also have other system applications like operating system components, drivers, networking software, telecommunications processors, and more. These are the examples of a system software that process largely undefined data. So the second type of a software, it's what we call application software. It is a standalone programs that solve a specific need. These type of software are aimed to um, speeding up transactions, recording and processing information to suit specific business needs. Third type, we have engineering or scientific software. It is a broad array of number crunching programs that basically used for engineering or scientific purposes. It caters the range from astronomy to volcanology, from automotive stress analysis to orbital dynamics, and from computer-aided design to molecular biology. In short, mathematical in nature that is used to forecast, predict, or simulate scenario using a data. A good example for that is we have the AutoCAD, we also have MATLAB and GeoGebra. Fourth type, we have the embedded software. Embedded software is actually similar to firmware because they usually serve the same function. Embedded software resides within a product or system and is used to implement and control features and functions for the end user and for the system itself. Good examples of the devices that use this type of software are, first, we have smartwatch. It program to connect to other devices. We also have pacemaker. It senses if the heart is beating faster or slower than normal then sends a signal to heart to regulate, uh, to regulate its beating. We also have washing machine, a fuzzy logic program in washing machine to allow the machine to decide how much water to put in and how long the, the wash cycle should be. Next, we have product line software. Product line software is designed to provide a specific capability for use by many different customers, like applications, but these applications are common to many, if not all, users doing the same functionality. Notice that different applications are built on top of one another to support the varying functionalities of the user. A good example for that is we have Office, applications. Next, we also have web or mobile software. This network-centric software categorizes or it categories spans a wide array of applications and, and encompasses 
both browser-based applications and software that resides on mobile devices. These are also like applications but is considered a breed of its own given the different kinds of tools and special usage requirements that the mobile or internet users require. The design of such software takes into consideration mobility and the last one is the remote locations. A good example for that is we have MyCab and we have Food Panda. Lastly, we have the artificial intelligence software. These are software that have gained traction in the last few years. The concept is not new, but the technology resources have made it right for the picking, so to speak. We are now able to create software that mimics how the brain works or decides on matters. The way that this is programmed is the software is non-trivial, sometimes non-numerical. A lot of the existing software are restored to incorporate this kind of feature, such as in the examples we have Alexa. Without Alexa, this is just a speaker. But with Alexa, Amazon provided the user a different experience using the virtual assistant. This is also true for Pandora, where the music played and based on learned emotions from chosen playlists. So if it feels like Pandora already knows what kinds of songs you want to hear. I have presented to you the important topics that we need to learn about software as it relates to this course or to, your, to you as a future software engineers. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or PM me in our group chat. Again, hopefully you have learned a lot with our discussion and thank you for listening.